a very historic night, and you don't even know it. Yeah. Don't forget, man. You pr you produced, recorded, and did, you know. Get, I'm serious. Put you know, because they have credits. I got you. Okay, so just let her rip, man. Just whatever, whatever comes out. <laughs> It's hard. It's hard. But I've been I've working real hard for sounds, about a week. Sounds good, man. You know me, I like those high notes. I like that shit. I like that sax. With the that, oh, with the growl. Yeah, I, I always like that. But I like the. Low you don't too. get to hear that on clarinet too much. No, not everybody can pull that off. I I haven't seen. Anything. It's from my sax days. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, I haven't seen anybody do it like you. Where you yeah, can, we're talking about like you know how I did things like creep and all that. Yeah. And like jazz musicians don't do that. They don't, I mean, they, they don't. I mean, all the people I know. Okay, I finally figured out w what it's all about. It was my attraction to rhythm and blues and playing it on sax that got me into the R&R and R&B. &R and &R and I just dig something that makes you feel good. But what is it about? Might as well leave this text on. What, what is it about creep that, you, that, that drew you in like that? Because uh, it's, a, it's the same thing that made them take it off the air in England because it was too sad and depressing. It's beautiful. That's it, man. And I've watched Radiohead ten times do it. 
And I forgot, man, I looked the guy up, uh, Greenwood or whatever his name is. He's like an old dude. Well, yeah, well, it was 1989. Yeah, isn't that crazy? You know, Jesus. Benny Gross's song uh, called Fairweather. It's take one. We're going to do another take on it. Uh, I, wasn't, I was reticent about mentioning names or anything because of like royalties and all that. On my regular YouTubes, nobody's demanded anything. I'm playing standards. So yeah, I have that standard YouTube license that you right. put on. That's right. Yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, I took it faster than normal. It's a beautiful song. Uh, I learned it in 1959, when Charlie Shoemake and I and his wife Sandy, we were playing, uh, Charlie Shoemake, the vibe player, he was playing piano in those days. That's when we played a club called the Hibachi down in, uh, oh, there's a camera, down in uh, one of the beach cities, uh, Hermosa Beach. Every Friday and Saturday night, we were out, it was a Japanese restaurant, here's where the Hibachi. And, uh, Charlie wrote out all these songs, man, like that were very hip for the day. And uh, that's a Benny Golson song from the album with Art Farmer. And the name of the song is Fair Weather. And I took it about twice as fast as you should. Now let's try it again. I'm having a few problems. I got a little, uh, a little lung problem. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm an old guy too, man. Come to think, I Not forgot. Not too bad for 32 years old. I'm 32 years old times four. That's absolutely right.
try. It's like a drum roll. Yeah. Fuck it, man. <laughs> I'm at my son's house, uh, Michael Weiss, here in Virginia. And uh, that's who the voice is. He's, uh, he's recording me. And uh, he gave me a discount because uh, yeah, I'm his dad. And, uh, Studio fees can get, get, get pretty high this time of year, so. We had to squeeze you in. I, I know. I, I really, uh, I really appreciate. It. I think it was very large of you, <laughs> to say the least. But let's not turn this into a gab fest. <laughs> the lip is still moving. <laughs>
<laughs> How to play the clarinet in 12 Man, years of you usher. Got your chops are definitely up. You got them going on. Man. Amazing, they are. Some, yeah, that, uh, I can't. I have practice. Work, uh, health problems. Yeah. Uh, and I can cut all this stuff out. All this bilateral yeah, 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 whatever. Pack it all out. But, uh, it's in your hands. Man. Good stuff, Dad. Uh, I got a question for you while you take your break. What's your favorite song to play? What is the what is the funnest song to play? I can't name one. Man. Not one. There's a group. Most of them is all from the American Songbook, the Great American the great Songbook. American Songbook. Yeah. yeah, the standards, which encompasses a time in Americana. Like the lyrics will be looked back as the great poetic, popular po poetry. Guys like Paul Porter and Ira Gershwin and. George Gershwin and um, all the rest of them, you know, the, the, the lyrics were unbelievable. Um, and they all matched the, uh, the sophistication of the music at the time. And that goes for your, all art kind of goes hand in hand. Um, that kind of goes with um, your literature, your uh, William Faulkner, your James Joyce, your F. Scott Fitzgerald, the great Gatsby, Ulysses, um, uh, the Sound and the Fury, Faulkner. There, all art uh, forms are usually about ten years ahead of the populace. Is that the camera there? Yeah, right yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not talking to the camera. I'm talking to my son. Well, I think it. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Cool, man. Well, now I got to talk to two two entities, uh, Mike and Mike. Uh, yeah. Um, it was a time that it's long gone. I I I was born at the wrong time. Given the wrong instrument, um, the clarinet was king during the 30s and early 40s. Then Bird came on, Bebop came on, and the clarinet went right into the toilet, as most of American music did. And we kind of segued into uh, some, not to put anything down, but uh, why not? Some, some so mediocre, sophomore, very pedestrian. Uh, how much is that doggy in the window, the one with the waggly tail, which was number one on the hit parade when I was growing up, there were, you know, for weeks, and there was no alternative. The only alternative music we had was called race music, and that's rock, uh, r and B. It's black music, and there were certain stations that played it, and that's what we musicians all listened to, and uh, because it swung, you know, and it, it was all based on blues changes, and any jazz musician worth his salt back in my time, up to almost recent times, if, if you couldn't play blues, you couldn't play jazz. It was a normal, uh, it was a normal transition. Uh, I hope that doesn't answer your question. Uh, you know, <laughs> Twelve others to come. But uh, why am I doing? I'm doing this. Uh, oh, nobody asked that. Well, I'll answer why, that why question. Why are you doing this? Uh, you know what? I hadn't thought about that until I'm glad you mentioned it, man. Well, um, my TV set broke down, and I can't watch uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, or uh, Kardashians, or you ever see a Kardashian? Anyway, uh, that's Kim, man. She's gonna be a, she's gonna be very fat when she gets older, by the way. You know, but, uh, but until that day, uh, you know, I keep checking on her, make sure she's cool, man. And uh, you know, I love that guy, Can North, or whatever his name is. You know, he's 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 sweet. Uh, maybe not. Right now he's in a little bit of trouble. I'm not going to get into any kind of political thing here, man, but, you know, Trump's the man. And uh, can, we, can we move it on to something else? Thank God she didn't win. But uh, no, we won't talk. Build the wall. <laughs> Build that federal wall, man. That's all. I wanted the wall built. Got about 50 people just turned the channel off. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you that subscribe, both of you has.
Afternoon in Paris, written by the great, late great John Lewis of the MJQ. Of the what? Pardon? The MJQ. Modern Jazz Quartet. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That was a that's a it's a good exercise that song. Just to put, and what I did, I played the melody or the head, and then I ad libbed the chorus using the using the chord structure of the song. And I, was, I just wasn't randomly playing notes that were to fit in the chord structure of the song. Gotcha. It's, uh, that's where you separate the, you know, not, you can't say men from the boys anymore because Free Stream, and I'm guilty of it, I, I did a whole album, uh, the, uh, one of my albums, uh, A Giant Step Out and Back, was a Free Stream uh, album. Um, I'm sure it'll be on the text and maybe we'll get it here, but my email is all lowercase M O R T W E I S S. Zero six at gmail dot com, and yes, I would like to hear from you people. Um, you know, you don't have to send checks or money orders, but hey, you know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, and for those of you who, un, again, most unpardonable thing I can think of for some strange, sinister reason, don't know who I am. I was kind of counting on you to tell me because you know I've you know, the sixties linger. Uh, my name is Mort Weiss. Google Mort Weiss if you're interested in and it's seeing me playing with a with a band. The guys didn't show up tonight, man. Hell, I don't know, just because the last checks bounced, so I gave them that. No, you know, I thought they were artists, man. What do you mean they have fiends? Screw them. Anyway, Google Mort Weiss, and if you want to see me playing like in a concert or a jazz festival, Google Mort Weiss YouTube. That's all you have to do. Stand back and um, feel free to. Go to CD Baby, iTunes, uh, Spotify, um, Amazon, all the usual places, and um, my things aren't for sale. I've got 11, 12 albums out. So, yeah, 12. I'm, and then some of you may or may not know this. I'm the guy that took a 40-year break slash hiatus from any music at all. Um, I stopped playing in 1965 and came back in 2001. Um, it's uh, if you Google more wise, you're going to see why because there's a lot of articles written about me and uh, reviews and critiques and most of them favorable and I'm very happy about that and um, what uh, the big thing I was just talking to Michael my son earlier uh, one of the biggest things in my life is that I've made the downbeat the downbeat critics uh, jazz poll for the last five years in a row as on clarinet star rising and. <laughs> At 83 years old, which I just turned uh, last month, I'm the oldest, the oldest star rising that I ever had, man. But uh, you know, hey, I hope I live long enough to like um, hit the zenith, man. And uh, you know, hate to think of me as a meteorite, but uh, no, that's a meteor that landed. I'm, at the, at, I'm thinking of a meteor left. But uh, well, I close better our YouTubes than this, man. Micah, uh, anything you'd like to say and like get the fuck out of my house or something? Well, let's do this and we can edit this out later. <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to show you the studio that we're in. This is how we do it, man. This is just my little fun room. And so Dad comes over here and he works his magic. And now I'm going to do the thing that I just thought of that's a little controversial and Dad may tell me not to do it. And I'll just cut it out and he'll never know about it. <clears throat> yeah, come on camera. It's my little boy. I don't even know if you can see me because I am rather tall. Let me go over this a little bit. It's my kid, Mikey. I'm, I'm the little boy. <laughs> Look, the reality. Is that on there? Look, and this is this is not planned. 
and I've never done this. Uh, I make YouTube videos of myself, and I don't do this, but I'm going to do it now. And uh, if he doesn't like it, we'll cut it out. So, arguably, he's the best living jazz clarinet player on the planet. And, you know, we could debate that, but if you check him out, if you, if you don't know who he is, people don't do this anymore, and the ones that could probably come close to it aren't living anymore. So, I would say collectively, in his life, He's probably made about twelve dollars and thirty six cents, <laughs> and has put every ounce of his heart and soul into this instrument. Uh, even when he took the hiatus, everything in his life was music based. Uh, you know, he was he he opened and built and ran music stores and cheap music shops and schools. He's given more to the industry than anybody I've ever met and ever will meet. So I'm going to put a little. Uh, button on the bottom of hit this of his YouTube channel and if you're a multi gazillionaire and you're looking for something to do with your extra change feel free to donate it to him man he's busted his ass <laughs> and you know the one thing we don't do is we don't ask for money in this family but fuck that I'm breaking the rules because the one thing that breaks my heart is watching him do what he does and what he's done his whole life and you know what, we're in the age now where you just download, you know, we've got boxes of CDs and things that he's worked his ass off on, spent money that you can't even imagine to get these things produced. And then people just copy all the music and download it and listen to it for free. Musicians don't make money these days, and I'm sure a lot of you musicians know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, you know, he's not living the Vita Loca. Look at our studio here. Anyways, that's my spiel. <laughs> Thank you. I might mention... Uh... Michael not only is an ex-Army paratrooper, but he's he's an ex-Los Angeles police officer, LAPD, and uh, and uh, one of the one well, of the highest. There he is with O.J. Simpson. Yeah, yeah, that's right, man. Mike, uh, I was so proud of Mike. He was uh, he's a 12-year veteran, LAPD. Had to retire, IOD, which means injured on duty, and yeah, it was a code three call, man, and he was on it. But uh, that's another story. Thanks, man. You might uh, dig Mike's channel, uh, L on this tactical. It's a little political now, so it's a lot political. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're in the music industry, you might want to avoid my channel. No, nah, hell, man, let it all hang out. As somebody I, I have a lot of respect for once said, I'm a little bit right of Attila the Hun. <laughs> We're still recording. Yes, sir.
That's a little song I just uh, wrote. It's called, uh, I Kissed Her on the Lips, But It's All Over Now, in A flat. I'm done. Do how much time do we have on here? Uh, how much did we record? Yeah. Uh, 48 minutes and 17 What do you think? Is it good enough for YouTube? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it. Now, I, I'm running out of Error. one, two. Last words. <laughs> At my age, please don't say that. Yeah. We don't use words like your last words. 83 years old, man. I think you're kicking ass, Dad. You sound great. Thank you, Mike. I can just hear, I'm going off the vibrations in my head from the mouthpiece. And then, oh, you know, I forgot to even take my teeth out to show them. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I, nobody does that, Mike. I had to relearn how to play again. Jesus, doctor, is it that bad? <laughs> Flatline. I've heard of a fib, but that's motherfucking ridiculous. I'm afraid to stop it, because I'll stop it, and you'll say something funny. <laughs> All right, I stopped it. Right. Is that what we just did? Yeah. <laughs>